I've just spent the happiest, most remarkable morning that uh, has ever fallen my way. I've been with the great architect A. Hayes Town, who lives in Baton Rouge. And Mr. Town was born in 1903, when Teddy Roosevelt was president of the United States, in Crowley. But at least any of you, my friends, think that that 90 years of age has impaired Mr. Town's brilliance and genius. Relax. Mr. Town can talk circles around all of us. He's quite a remarkable man. What's your earliest memory, Hayes? What, what do you remember about way back? Well, I was born in Crowley, which you know. I saw the first airplane. That's not my first memory, but that's one of the early ones. The first airplane that ever flew in the skies of Louisiana. It landed in Crowley, I think, to get gas. It was coming from the north to somebody who bought it in New Orleans. I was there. I saw the first airplane that ever touched its wheels down. I saw it take off, fly over towards Lafayette and to New Orleans. Was it frightening to see this thing suddenly come out of the sky? It was not frightening to me, but it was frightening to the horses. We were there in buggers to watch it. I see. And a lot of them tore the buggers up, I can assure you. Now, and I knew that this would change the history of the world. You did. But during my lifetime, I myself flew a plane for about 25 or 30 years. Also, when I was 83, I landed a jet. And I retired from that year, I retired from flight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Town uh, uh, was a 15-year-old boy, and his father came to him with an unusual request. What did he ask you to do? A, a re Redesign the house? Well, he was afraid I was going to be an artist. So he didn't want me to be an artist. He didn't think I could make a living. And I think he was right, maybe. But he asked me... Notice to, he added the word maybe. Go ahead. <laughs> I, uh, I actually... Uh, he asked me, he said, Son, I'm going to add a story to our house and redesign the front, and I want you to draw the plans. I did. Uh, the contractor, a successful contractor, was J.B. Mouton. Of Lafayette. Brand new contractor. He'd only been in, that's maybe his first job, really. And he did build it. There's an interesting part of the story. Do you have time to listen to it? If it's, if we, if we, we've got so much to cover. I know. Let me go on to the next thing because there's so huh. much time. But you designed two more houses. Yes, I did for Mr. Mouton, and he paid me. My first fee was 1918. My goodness. Then I went to... Uh, Tulane, and well, I went to Southwestern first. First, you went to a place called SLI, right, which is now the University of Southwestern in Lafayette. That's correct. My, uh, university I dearly love. Me too. And uh, then you went to Tulane. I went to Tulane after that, 1922. I want to ask you a question about those years in New Orleans. Did the French Quarter? Uh, 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 play a part in uh, uh, your later uh, oh, design work? Very, and so on? very much. As a matter of fact, it was one of the highlights of my life in New Orleans. The French Quarter was wonderful. People don't know how wonderful it really is. It's one of the great pieces of architecture in our country, in my opinion. See, you and I have something in common. When I was at LSU, I hung around the French Quarter, too, uh -huh. but never noticed the architecture. <laughs> <laughs> so after you got your degree, you uh -huh. went to work in Mississippi. Yeah. I worked for a man... Uh, the head professor at Tulane uh, told me if I would take the job, I could be the head man to go down to the middle uh, Central America and Mexico and measure up the old, the, the first, it was the first uh, trip down there from, New, uh, from uh, Tulane uh, to measure up those old buildings. And I was going to be the head man to do it and not buildings, but uh, monuments. Yes, sir. And I was going to be the head man, and I'd already told my, my wife that we were going to get married shortly after I got out. Well, I couldn't go down there for five years and do that, so I decided not to take it. So Prof. Thompson got me a job in Jackson, Mississippi. There was no work around here for me. And I went there as a low man on the totem pole. That old man had just gotten his you hear that? Can you get that whole story? Just got your degree. 
from, uh, yeah. from Tulane. Yeah. And then when I walked in there, I thought I was going to a one-horse operator like I'd known in New Orleans. Yes, sir. He had just gotten a big, the biggest job he ever had, 100 buildings on the insane hospital. My gosh. And he had hired draftsmen from those big universities, and I thought, oh, boy, I'm in the wrong place here. I want to be a one-man deal, you know? Well, I got into the picture, and I found out that one man could work harder than anybody else, and I was him. So when the time came, uh, I, I did a great deal of the drawing. And when the time came that Mr. Overstreet had to quit, the new governor, Bilbo, came in and hated Mr. Overstreet, so he stopped the job. So each one of those little boys and me was still there. One by one, they left, and I always said, I'm next. But when it was over, I was the only one. Two weeks after it was all over, Mr. Overstreet came up and said, hey, we got to go to Memphis to get a, can I continue? Yes, to, sir, sure. We'll go to Memphis to get a head man because I just got a job that's very difficult. We're going to make a, a eight-story hotel out of a three-story building. And I said, well, what about me, Mr. Overstreet? He said, oh, you, you're just out of school. You couldn't handle a job like that. And then a week later, he showed up. He says, uh, Hey, we're ready to go. Tomorrow we go to Memphis and bring somebody. He said, what are you doing back there? I said, I'm designing a hotel. He came back and looked at over. He says, we're not going to Memphis, Hayes. <laughs> you can do it. I'm surprised because you, you don't have that kind of experience. And you ended up his partner. I ended up his partner. You came there as a young man right out of college. Yeah. And then he, obviously I, they spotted the talent, you know, very early on. Well, apparently he did. <laughs> uh, you did some historic work in Mississippi, too, Yeah, I was you? head of the Historic American Building Survey for the government in the 30s. I measured all the old houses in Natchez and all through Mississippi. And at one time, when I was a kid at school, I worked for Richard Koch in New Orleans. He was the head of the uh, Louisiana delegation, like I was in Mississippi. And we used to visit each other back and forth and see what we were doing. So all of it helped me to get information. Mr. Town, you've d designed, uh, drawn uh, uh, more than a thousand buildings in your distinguished oh, career. I'm sure. Way over a thousand. Uh, every kind of building. Yeah. Churches, office buildings, and so on. Yet you are known and will be remembered for those glorious homes that you've designed for a lot of lucky people that encompass the magic and the romance of the past uh, 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 with today. You, you, you've amalgamated them. You've married the past and, and, and the present. How did you finally de decide to design homes? How did you begin to specialize in house design? Uh, that is an interesting story. When I came here from Jackson, I had done no houses, maybe one or two. Uh, I had done big buildings and that hospital also. And uh, when I came here, I had prepared to come here to be a commercial architect. When I got here, the strangest thing happened. They put the governor in jail, they put all the left-hand men, the contractors, the architects, and all went to jail. And a little country lawyer, Sam Jones, became governor. Right. He looked around for an architect. He couldn't be sure there was none tainted. Somebody told him, there's a fellow in Hayes Town who's a good architect here, but he's not in Louisiana and all this was going on and he did no state work. So Sam Jones gave me my share, more than my share, of the state work. My goodness. That started me off. So for many years, I did nothing but the public works and commercial works, schools and things, and courthouses. I did the courthouse at Abbeville and courthouse in New Iberia, and it was a great joy. But one day I made the mistake of doing a house with somebody. And I liked the people so much, and I enjoyed the relationship. I said, you know, I believe I'll quit commercial and go into residential. And that started me. And that's what started yeah. There's something interesting about many of your, your houses that you design. You incorporate old, old materials whenever you can. Mm -hmm. For example, I'm thinking of the Sashery home in Lafayette, yeah. where the beams are out of the Bio Sugar Refinery sure. uh, uh, in that home, mm. that glorious home. Mm. 
Well, let me tell you about that, too. Uh, I think I started the movement of old materials. When I started building my house, uh, Bill LeBlanc was a contractor, and he was down at the river tearing down a state building. And I went and I said, Bill, could I buy those bricks? He said, what do you mean, buy them? I said, well, I'm, I'm building a house. I'd like, he said, you mean you'd put this junk in a house? I said, I sure would. He said, I'll give you all these bricks. You make me a little sketch in front of my office building, and I'll make you, all the bricks are yours. So I got the bricks for nothing. I went downtown, and they were shoveling the sleet roof off of a, a, a drugstore down on 3rd Street. Went to the contract, said, I'd like to buy them. He said, just pay those men for taking them off. So I got slate free, and I got brick free. That's why I was able to give, get this house paid for. What's the most exotic source you've ever gone to for that old material? Have you ever really gone to some way out exotic source? I mean, not really. I went to New Orleans wherever I could find it. It was all that, at one time in New Orleans. And uh, I had people that knew that I wanted, and they'd call me when they found some. But not really exotic. What do you want a Hayes Town home to see? If I see that house, what, what do you want that house to say to me? Uh, first of all, I'd like for it to say that I've been here a long time. And that's what my houses are. They settle down to look like they've been here forever. I like that. I like it because all of the antiquity I knew, both in my historic survey and in my love as a young boy for the fine Cajun country, the things I liked told me what I wanted, you know? And I did want this. And when I started, you take these beams up here, they were out of a little theater in New Orleans. Uh, the bricks here uh, all came from New Orleans. Or Hayes here. Town is a romantic. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I think so. I think so, because it's my life. It's reflected in your work. Yeah. You know, you were talking about the, the, the age that you get, you manage to get on houses, the look. Nothing looks like it's just been built. Right. Nothing is cookie cutter, as I think someone referred. <laughs> it's all got a kind of a weathered character to exactly. it. Exactly. Much could, like Mr. Town. If I could uh, capture this, I've done a good job. I think you'll agree that maybe I did in my own house. <laughs> Slightly. What did, what did you enjoy doing in your spare time? What did you like? Well, my spare time, I work in my spare time. And I, I worked when Blanche was alive. I worked uh, 2 o'clock every morning. And finally, I got to where I would work. I'd get up at 2 and work. So uh, always I worked most of the nights. Always, the most of the hours of the night. And I've always enjoyed it. And I've done many men's work besides my own because in an office, I had 15 employees at one time. Now I have two, three. Uh, but I kept a big business and I did real well. And you tell me that you're still doing some design but trying to wind down, I think. Uh, I've done my last design. Right now, the houses I have that are being built when they're over, I will no longer be an architect. That'll be sometimes the middle of the next year. But what a legacy uh, 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 you, you give to posterity yeah. and to uh, people who love beauty. I hope what so. A, what, what a legacy. Oh, you're, you, mm -hmm. you're in good shape, but you're already immortal. <laughs> That's not bad. That's pretty good. Uh, you paint also. Yeah. I think that I will use some of my last years to paint pictures. And I, I have some pictures of Louisiana that I think represents Louisiana pretty well. And a lot of it's memories, huh? All of it's memories. Yeah, places you went as a boy. I don't have anything to go by except memories. And recently, there was a story about Commandant de Chenier. It was in a New Orleans newspaper, Picayune. I was out on the a, uh, a Gulf uh, Coast down there, uh, Grand Isle. And I picked up the paper and read the story, and I liked it so much. It seems to me that uh, it was a wonderful little island, beautiful, had a Catholic church, had some houses, and the bell started tolling. It got so loud that the people got frightened, and most of them left and went to the shore, and they were saved. I think one little girl was saved by a Chinaman, and uh, that was an interesting story to me. 
And it recently something occurred to me that made it even more interesting. Uh, Lafcadio Hoyan wrote a story about called Last Hour, Leo Danielle. And it was a wonderful story. And my friend, uh, uh, Dr. Lemon, that you know over here. Yes, sir. Uh, we were kids together. He told me about Lafcadio Hoyan in 1922. He became my favorite author. And if you haven't read him, you should. I have, yes, sir. And uh, I have all of his books, most of them first edition. Oh. So recently, I saw a picture of them in the library, and I couldn't get to see them, so I wrote them. They wrote me back. Now, let's imagine this. They wrote me back and thanked me. I sent them, uh, they, I told them all my books, and they said I had two books they didn't see. They heard he'd written them. I sent them the books. I am now a member of Lafcadio Cardiohoyne's family. <laughs> I was even invited to go to the dedication of a building they're building in Japan for him. Goodness. The 30 scholars in the United States uh, headed there in an airplane, and they wrote me from the University of uh, uh, Ohio asking me to go with them. Of course, would, I didn't go. Let me ask you a question. Would you want to be a young man again, and knowing all that you know, and, and, and you have a vision of the future? If you could do something magic, where, where, how do you feel about the future? Well, I don't feel good about it. I think we are going into a one world government, and I think it's going to be very hard for us to take. That's my picture of the future. And I think the world is going to be very, very different from my world. I think if I had to pick a century, yes, sir. I lived in the best century. Mr. Town, when uh, you were born, uh, Teddy Roosevelt was president of the United States, and now Bill Clinton is president. What, in, in that great period of time, who, what presidents did you particularly admire or like? I think maybe if I had to pick one, it might have been Wilson. Woodrow Wilson. Yeah. I know he did an excellent job during the war periods. How'd you like Truman? I thought he was strange and funny, but I thought that he, he did a good job as president. How about Reagan? Reagan, I admired Reagan. I think he was an actor, a hero, and I think when he became president, he was still an actor and a hero. I do believe he was... He played the part wonderfully. Though. I think he played the part wonderfully. <laughs> I, I, I agree with that. Uh, the one I thought the least good about was uh, uh, Roosevelt when he was president. And uh, I recognized he was doing some good things, but I didn't like his uh, change to socialism, and then I didn't care for him. And all during the period since then, I found that some were very good. I was a little disappointed when Bush lost out because he was a fine man. Yes. I don't know what kind of a president he made, but uh, uh, things are changing in this world. I know that you'll have one world government up to the turn of the century. How big a part we'll play in it, and what, how important we'll be, I don't know. How about who was your favorite governor? Uh, they were all friends of mine. Of course. And I liked them personally. But to compare them as governors, I'm not sure I can. If you had to point to one building that you designed, one house that you're most proud of, which house would it be? Or is that an unfair question? In a way it is, but, uh, you know, a lot of the people I work for attach themselves to me so much that the house reflects them. And it might not be the architecture as much as the people, so... Isn't that interesting? Yeah, but I guess that uh, I've done some beautiful houses in my own opinion. And I have one right now that I think is going to be a masterpiece also. It's coming up. It's being built now. In Baton Rouge? In Baton Rouge. Yes, yeah. sir. Uh, but you'd rather I, not pick one. I can I, understand I, that. I'd pro I prefer not to. <laughs> I don't blame you. I have a hundred people that wonder why theirs wasn't. <laughs> when you retire, uh -huh. uh, you're winding down your architectural work, how would you keep busy because you are so alert and so vibrant and so vital. Uh, uh, you're not the typical old man who's going to rock in a chair. That mind is uh -huh. ticking, obviously. Well, Too much, I'd <laughs> say. If, if it were possible for me to keep my health, I could enjoy the rest of my life. There's some things in the world. I, I've been to France and England and, and Germany and, and uh, Italy so many times. I know those countries, and I know some of the greatest people over there accidentally met them. I mean, some of the world's greats. 
and it's wonderful to be in that position. But now I know that time is catching me. Nobody at my age could close their eyes and not see something. Uh, I don't want to see too much of the world. I like Mexico for just a quick trip. What if, if I asked you to give advice to young men and women out there, young people, I said, Mr. Town, give them some advice. What would your advice be to a young person? <laughs> well, it's hard to pick out one single thing. But first of all, hard work. You never get anywhere in your life unless you work. And dedication, you have to really mean it. And if you didn't have that, you'll never make it. It's not accidental, I don't believe. Here's a question that may not be fair, but you can handle it. Do you have any big regrets about your career in your life that you would share with us? Anything you'd, you say, oh, I wish I'd have done that different or that different or that different? No, I'm a man that's satisfied. Isn't that something? Yeah. I, uh, I know I must have made some mistakes along the way, and <laughs> if I could think hard of it, I might dig them out. But uh, I think that my life has been so blessed that I shouldn't question the Lord's good favors. Do you still enjoy people, the company of people? Oh, sure. You still do enjoy sure. it. Good food still? Yeah. You like good food? Sure. Uh -huh. yeah. When I was here a little while ago in, in, in Mr. H uh, uh, Town's kitchen, there is the most wonderful smell coming <laughs> from something on the stove, and I, I inquired, it's chilly, and it must be a knockout. <clears throat> All I can tell you is that my wife that I married from Abbeville was the best cook in the world. And if anybody could ever approach her, I would like to eat their food. So she left the cook knowing a little bit of her knowledge. My daughter has picked up some of it. To what do you attribute your obviously remarkable health? I'm looking for secrets now. <laughs> well, I've never found a secret. Uh, I worked hard all my life, and I can assure you one thing, it won't kill you. <laughs> and I, I had a wonderful family. And I didn't have the problems that most people had. I, I made a good living after I got off of uh, the school period edge. Uh, from then on out, I always did well financially. Uh, I, I don't think I would change anything that I did, but I can't tell you what... No particular answer, health but, secrets. No. Did you smoke? I did for a while. You did? And a young man, a young lawyer, met me on the street one day and said, Man, I just quit smoking. I said, why? He said, I read something, an article in a magazine. He said, you ought to read it. So I read it, and I agreed with it. I stopped smoking that day. I've never touched it again in my life. About three weeks later, he started. He's been dead now 30 years on account of smoking. Goodness. So uh, I never changed my health with the smoking I did, because I hadn't smoked too long. Were you a big reader? Did you read a lot? things I was interested in, not just to read. But I have many, many wonderful stories that I read through by wonderful authors, and I've written a lot of things myself. And I've, one of the things in my life that other people don't do, if I see something in a magazine that somebody did something I think is great, I write them and tell them. And you told me that you'll do some painting now, you thought. I will. More painting. I will. Your collection, uh, and we won't say where it's stored, no. but your collection is glorious and magnificent. We decided that you were a good collector because unlike a lot of people, you knew what it was you were getting. Well, I didn't hire people to help me. I learned before I spent my money. If I go to a museum when I left, I could tell you what is Ming, what is Kong Shi, what is the early periods and things, I would know that myself. And when I bought things, I may have made some mistakes, but it would have been rare, I think. Have you ever uh, had anybody put a fake over on you? I don't think so. Is I don't believe so. Because uh, you bought all over the world. Yeah, but uh, sometimes you, you, you miss on some things that you can't help. But to my knowledge, right now, I couldn't name them. Mr. Town's collection is world-class, like Mr. Town. This program is called Louisiana Legends. Today I feel like 
I've been in the presence of a priceless, magnificent Louisiana legend, A. Hayes Town. And program series enables us to discover through the accomplishments of our fellow Louisianians the unique character of the state so proudly served by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Louisiana for 60 years.